Sycamore Junior High is? Uh, Sycamore Junior High is discovering the extraordinary innovative view. Sycamore Junior High is? Sycamore Junior High is a great place. They have great recess and everything. You would love it here. Have a great time. Sycamore Junior High is? Sycamore Junior High is a great place to be. Junior High is? Sycamore Junior High to me is a great academic, well-rounded school. I think it's a great place for students. I think it's a great place for teachers and I think it's one of the best schools in the state of Ohio. Sycamore Junior High is a great place where you can be creative and learn so many new things. What is Sycamore Junior High? It's fun. Sycamore Junior High is Sycamore Junior High is fun. Sycamore is STEAM focused. Welcome to the rising 7th grade orientation and academic fair. We are so excited to have you here. Uh, let's give a round of applause for our cheerleaders. So January is a very <laughs> exciting time for our school. I'm Dr. Tracy Ray. I'm the proud principal of Sycamore Junior High, and we are so excited to have you and your children joining us next year. 
Every January, we begin an extensive process to make you and your children feel very comfortable to come join our Sycamore Junior High family. So in January, we began a process of meeting with the PTO at Green, working with Mr. Tudor and his administrative and counseling staff and department supervisors to put together a very detailed plan on tours and all sorts of things. This evening is about the midway point of that transition plan, and so this evening is going to be filled with quite a bit of information. Um, I'd like to introduce you at this point to the remaining uh, administrators on the administrative team, my right hand and wonderful administrators, Mrs. Elvey and Mr. Sturgeon. So if we can give them a round of applause. Mr. Sturgeon is the assistant principal who oversees the transition and is also the seventh grade assistant principal here at the building, so that's a real nice fit, and he is responsible for putting together this wonderful evening. So this evening you're going to get a lot of information, nuts and bolts. We're going to talk to you about the, the school day and after school opportunities and activities. We're also, we have our counseling staff here to talk about some details that will be relevant to you. Our department supervisors are going to speak a little bit about the courses that you're seeing on the information and the mailing that came home to you. And then in about uh, 45 minutes we'll be finished with the information portion and then we go up to an academic fair where well, you will be able to see um, booths from the elective classes that you're seeing on the course selector and the information talk with those teachers department supervisors will also be available for questions counselors administrators in addition to the information that you'll see here, we will have our wonderful news crew, which is an elective. Uh, it's a group of students who are interested in technology and production. They will actually, over the next course of a week or two, depending on how long it takes them to polish up this presentation, will take tonight's information along with the slides, so there's no need to take notes. Um, and if you're in the back, uh, feel free to just listen and enjoy, and all of this information will be emailed out uh, in a BB Connect or through the S'more, which is one of the places that we will recommend you continue to watch for information. We will continue the remainder of this year and through the summer planning and preparing to make you feel comfortable and your children and uh, welcome them next August, which will be here, as we all know, in the blink of an eye. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Sturgeon. Good evening. Dr. Ray had mentioned the news crew. They had put together the, the slideshow and, the, and the, uh, what you saw in the intro as you came in. What, uh, I wanted to show you one other video, one other welcome video that they put together for you guys to see tonight. Open up the front door. Pop. It's our school. Come on. Come on in. Hear the bell in the hall and the day begins. Cause we've done this before, so you come on in Make yourself at home, tell me where you've been We're the junior high, where the fun begins Sometimes you say go A, go A And you know the way, way So don't hesitate, way Sometimes you gotta say go Go A Welcome to our school Students make good choices we can choose our classes, we can take electives. Welcome to our school, we have more clubs and sports. Show me what you do now, we own responsibilities. Welcome to our school. Welcome to our school. Last bell comes when you want to stay. Sometimes you gotta say go, go away. Welcome to our school. Students make good choices. 
we can choose our classes, we can take electives, welcome to our school, we have more clubs and sports, show me what you do now, we have responsibilities, welcome to our school. a video camera. That would be members of the news crew and Mrs. Jarvis leads that crew. Could you give them one more round of applause? What um, we always have with students and parents that are coming up from the Green School is of course concern of just basic information you know that everybody would need to know so we try to give you some of that here and then you'll get more specific questions that you can get answered as you go up to the academic fair piece and the media center so this gives you a basic overview of the day so obviously we have seventh and eighth graders here school days uh, we usually let the kids off the bus around 750 752 to come in and get uh, ready for the day eight o'clock starts first bell we run through uh, we do have an aviator bell, which is kind of an advisory bell where a lot of information is given to kids. We do news crew, we do uh, video announcements, and, and also do some intervention and enrichment type things during that, during that time period, depending on the day. We have three lunches here that all happen during fifth bell, and then we dismiss the students at 307. <clears throat> it's a seven period day, uh, 48 minute bells, so just long enough, we think. Um, four minutes to transition, that's always a concern for parents and students. Uh, four minutes, we've determined, is plenty enough time. There are some classes that are one end of the bell or the other, and we try to help students to determine what's a good time to go to your bell, go to your locker, so that, you know, all the things that you remember when you were in high school and in junior high, when do I go actually to my locker so I can make it on time? Um, and then what we also do to make things easier for your student to get out to the bus in a timely fashion is to put their locker near their seventh bell class so that way they can make sure that they make it out on time. Okay, ways that you can get information here at the junior high is check your email. We have the newsletter that goes out every Friday. Uh, emergencies and reminders would also go out through BB Connect, which then comes to you through email. Um, we try to limit the calls as much as possible just because we know that, you know, we want to make sure that if you're getting a call from us that you know it's uh, something that you really need to pay attention to. Um, we also have the website where we have our calendar on there and as you see we have Twitter as well. So we'll also put um, the newsletter on the website. First day of school. So when your student uh, comes the first day, of course, bring their schedule. We'll have a schedule pickup at the beginning of August where they'll be able to get that and fill out some final forms and do some other things. You'll get information about that later. But bring the schedule, obviously their Chromebook, something to write with, some paper. Um, and then for honors classes, we'll have summer reading and an assignment due. So you can get more information about that with specific uh, teachers. Uh, we also, for specific teachers, would have a supply list that they would get during that schedule pickup day as well in early August. Another question we get quite often is about carrying book bags to school on the first. We allow it on the first day. Um, it's a safety concern. We want to make sure that we do everything to keep all kids and staff safe all the time. It's our number one priority, and this is just one of the measures, many measures that we do to accomplish that. So. We don't allow any string bags, totes, or clear backpacks either. So just to clarify, they can use them to, to transport items back and forth from home, but we typically want them to store those in the locker, okay? That's what we typically do with that. Um, we also get a lot of questions about bringing your own device and uh, cell phone. We, obviously, your students will have their Chromebook. They're going to bring that with them from the Green School to here. That device will be used. It's mandatory to use that on any map testing that we do. So it's, it's, we like for them to use our device, but if you go through 
the district and fill out the right forms, they can actually use their own device on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you want them to, or if they would like to, they can do that. Um, we would only, just like I mentioned, make them use it for the map or air testing that we would do, where we would incur, we would contact you guys, make sure that they bring that charge ready to go for those days. Uh, cell phones, we do not permit them to have cell phones during the school day. We allow them to bring them on campus, store them into their, in their locker. If they need that device, uh, I mean, if they need to contact you, we, we have an open office policy. They can come down and let us know or let a teacher know, hey, I have to contact my parent. If you need to reach them, call the office. We can get to them in seconds. Uh, so we just find that it, it really helps us keep them engaged in the instruction that the, that the teachers are giving. <laughs> so that's the basics that I have for you at this time. I want to introduce our school nurse, Mrs. Amy Bonham. Welcome to the junior high. Um, I'm Amy Bonham, and like Mr. Sturgeon said, no cell phones are permitted. Um, if you do get contacted by your child um, via email or another way, phone call, just direct them down to me, and I'd be glad to call if I feel it's necessary. I've got lots of tricks and uh, tips to work through stomach aches, headaches, all kinds of different little remedies for them to make their day successful at the junior high. And on to immunizations, you guys have probably already heard the Tdap and the MCV4 are necessary age 11, um, and that is the requirement for them to come into seventh grade. So if you haven't already reached out to your pediatrician, uh, just reach out to them, ask them if those two shots are already given, and if they have been given, just ask for a printout. Send that to Mrs. Lori Dubrowski at the Green School. Uh, all the school records are still there until the very end of the school year. So if they come here, I have to send them back to Lori. Um, and if you have any special needs or concerns, just feel free to give me a call or email me. Uh, we can get together in the beginning of the school year to work out anything that you uh, feel is necessary for your student. And I'd like to introduce you now to Mr. Brenner. Um, introduce the counselors real quick. I just want you guys to know that while we do assist students with all things academic, we really are there to help them with anything and everything that a junior high student could ex expect at a junior high. So just keep that in mind. If you do need to reach out to us, um, we split by alphabet, much like Green School does. If you're lucky enough to be last names A through G, you will have me, Mr. Brenner. I'll be taking care of you guys. Um, if you're H through N, you're going to have Kristen Suter. And if you are O through Z, you'll have the wonderful Rachel Morris in there. We also have uh, Jeff Tom, he's a wonderful resource here in the building. He really uh, is a little bit of a crisis counselor along with being all things bullying. So we definitely filter things through him along with the counselors and he's just a great person to have. Some of you might even know him because he works at the Green School as well. One of the next things I want to point out, just a few important dates. Uh, March 2nd, that's going to be the most important thing. That's actually this Friday. Uh, it's the final due date to turn in those course selectors that you should have received in the mail just recently, along with any course adjustments that you might have asked about or have a form for. So those will be due as well on Friday. March 14th, uh, verification sheets will go home with your students in their Thursday packets over at Green School. What that is, it's just a quick list of the courses that you guys selected together on the course selector just to show you that we got the right ones down. And if anything is a discrepancy there, you would just email us and we could go ahead and correct that for you. And then, believe it or not, before you know it, August 8th and 9th, there will be the student schedule pickup. What's nice about that day, not only will they get their finalized schedule, but they'll have an opportunity to walk the building and actually find their classes, so that'll help them quite a bit. Um, I jumped right over April 25th, 26th. That is actually my favorite day because that gives all of your sixth grade students the ability to come over. They tour this building. Our eighth grade beta club kids are all really excited because they were on sixth graders just a short time ago. They tour them through the building. They get to have lunch over here and learn a lot more about the junior high. So if you want to mark on your own calendars, that's a day that you want to make sure that they're in school, <laughs> trying not to be sick that day, so they can come over and see the junior high. 
All right, real quick, I just want to show you, um, this is the course selector that should have showed up in the mail. We actually mailed it last Tuesday. And for any reason you still haven't received us, just email us, let us know. We should be able to get a copy of that to you. Um, for the most part, on the left side of that course selector are going to be the courses that were recommended for your son or daughter. And we really highly encourage that you stick to those recommendations because those have been proof for the success when they come over to the junior high. Uh, on the right hand side there, that's the opportunity where you have to make some choices for the first time. So you get to choose a, a, from a global language along with their music course and pending that music course selection, they might be able to choose some of those electives that they were singing about in the video earlier. A um, few seventh grade requirements, just want to point those out real quick. Uh, the four cores, of course, we've got language arts, social studies, science, and math. Then you get to choose the global language, that is a year long course. Um, everyone is required to do physical education as well as art as a seventh grader. And then for music, you actually have the choice to do a year long or a semester. If you do do the year long though, that would be choir, orchestra, or band, you are required to stay in it for the duration of the year. So it's, a, it's an expectation that if you choose that, you're going to see it to the end. So that is important. The next question we're probably going to have though is how does that all fit together in our seven bell day? <laughs> And I am going to let Rachel Morris step up and show you how that works. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, as Mr. Brenner said, I'm going to review um, examples of what a seventh grade schedule will look like. So as you can see, um, this is just a sample. Please keep in mind this is not exactly how your student schedule will look. Their classes could be arranged in any order throughout the school day. This is just to give you an idea of what classes they will actually have. So four of the seven bells will consist of the four core subjects, language arts, math, science, and social studies. All students will also have an aviator bell between fourth and fifth bells. They will also have, as Mr. Brenner said, the required physical education and health class for one semester, as well as the art seven class for one semester. Global language is a requirement, so that is a year-long course that students will take. If they happen to be recommended for one of the academic support classes, those classes will then take the place of the global language class. And finally, the music uh, requirement um, for students taking band, orchestra, or choir, those are your long courses, and that would complete your child's schedule if they are taking band, orchestra, or chorus. Um, they wouldn't have room in their schedule for any of the other elective classes that we offer here at the junior high, um, but keep in mind their eighth grade year, that um, would open up a little bit because the art class is no longer required, so they would have the, choice, or the chance to take one of our elective classes as an eighth grader. The second um, sample, option B, as you can see, is very similar to the first one we just reviewed with the one exception of the music elective class. So we do have semester-long elective classes for music. That would be intro to guitar, intro to piano, and the international music class. If your child chooses one of these, they would have the opportunity as a seventh grader to take one of our elective classes. Um, as Dr. Ray said, following this presentation, you'll have the chance to be introduced to some of those elective courses. Um, we also have our course planner posted on our website under the counseling tab if you want further descriptions of those classes. Lastly, I'd like to discuss high school credit options that we have here at the junior high level. For students in the accelerated and double accelerated math classes, they will be taking the Algebra 1 and possibly Geometry math classes. Both of those are high school level courses. In addition, we offer Foundation of Art, which is a high school level class for our 8th graders as an art elective class for them to choose from. All three of these courses um, provide a grade as well as high school credit and those grades and credits um, cannot be removed from their high school credit so the or high school transcript so those grades and credits are permanent additionally our global language classes are high school level courses um, students will earn credit for those classes as well but keep in mind they do have the opportunity until the uh, first semester of their junior year of high school to request that those uh, that credit be removed from their high school transcript and it is with great pleasure that I introduce the wonderful Mr. Teeks. Good evening. Um, we have, uh, with Global Language, Spanish, French, Latin, and Chinese that are offerings. And uh, as Mrs. Morris mentioned there, for high school credit, that's one of the things that actually, at the beginning of the year, a lot of students seem surprised when we mention that in class. I want to emphasize that, that it's a high school level class, and their grade does affect their high school GPA, their transcripts. So it's pretty important that 
that you understand that and they understand that so they want to get a good start and, and do well all year. Um, a few of the common questions we get, the, probably the biggest one, how do I decide what language to take? There's no one right, right, right reason to take a class. Um, it comes down to their interest, um, maybe their, you know, their future, thinking for high school and college, is there one language that might help them with um, whatever major they might want to go into. It might be a family situation. It might be where your family travels, or you know, maybe they'll want to have an international job sometime, and uh, and, and a particular language might help them. But there's no right answer. So a lot of times, parents will come up to us tonight and ask, and and there's no great answer to give you other than there, there's a million reasons to take any language. Uh, my biggest suggestion is take the one that the the, the that your daughter or son seems most interested in. You know, the more interested they are, the better they're going to do. So. Um, they can also change languages. That's something that I think a lot of people feel like once they take one language, they're, they're in it for the long haul, but they can change at any time, you know, between years. So uh, if they start in French and want to switch to Latin the next year, they can certainly do that. So um, another question we get is with native speakers. Um, generally, we don't have a lot of great options for native speakers unless they really want to work on, sometimes it's writing skills, but um, for the most part, we have beginners and the level one course, and then once you get off schedule, if you start with level um, two in the seventh grade, then we don't offer anything for your eighth grade year. Something else we hear from the high school teachers is they don't like it when they have uh, a freshman in Spanish four, because they talk about mature topics sometimes and things, and there's a social issue there. So uh, my biggest suggestion for a native speaker would be to try out a different language while they're here, and then move on with their classmates um, in the high school level. So uh, we can talk about that more in visual. So. Okay, thank you very much. Now someone is going to talk about all things mathematical, that is Mrs. Tallman. Our math department is made of eight talented teachers who work to ensure that our students have a firm grasp of the challenging content, as well as guide them to become good problem solvers and critical thinkers. We have special education and ESL support, along with a super strong intervention program called Strategic Math. We have four offerings of math at the seventh grade level. First is academic, known as Math 7, which makes up approximately 60% of our students. We presently use the seventh grade digits program, which is based on the Common Core Standards and utilizes the online homework feature. The main focus of the seventh grade curriculum, and it's tough, it is, it's proportional reasoning along with computation of rational numbers, it's those crazy positive and negative numbers, and demanding study of probability. The content is differentiated to meet the needs of all of our learners. In general, the students have homework four nights a week and are required to show work on paper even though the assignment is completed online. Honors, which makes up approximately 20% of our students. Placement in this course is based on MAP scores between the 90th and 94th percentile. This course is designed for students who enjoy the challenges of math, learn at a fast pace, and have mastered all previously taught skills. The Common Core Standards for Grade 7 are the basis of this course, but we incorporate a lot of the Grade 8 standards as well. Students should be able to handle multitask assignments and a heavier workload than Math 7, work independently, and possess advanced math and critical thinking skills. The expectation of this course will demand deeper levels of understanding and application of content standards via project-based learning opportunities, critical thinking assignments, along with challenging classwork and homework. Accelerated, which is a 20% of our population, you have to be placed in this pathway through your test scores. We use the 8th grade digits program, so they truly are accelerated a grade level above. Um, also based on Common Core, their primary focus is linear equations and functions. With these classes, there is a heavy supplement of Algebra 1 material. It's a fast-paced course where students must have solid problem-solving skills and be passionate about math. Homework is assigned five nights a week. Uh, these students will take Algebra 1 their eighth grade year. And finally, uh, Algebra 1 
this one class of students is taking the high school course for transcript credit using the high school textbooks and assessments that include semester and final exams. These students will then move on to high school geometry in their eighth grade year. Now it's my honor to present, uh, introduce language arts teacher, Ms. Leah Hoffer, Hostler. Sorry. Hello, I'm Leah Hostler. Um, I'm here on behalf of Sarah Schelt, the department head for language arts. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about the pathways here at junior high for language arts English. There are three pathways. There is language arts honors, that is um, for students who have a MAP score of the 95 percentile or higher within the last past year, sixth grade. There is homework every night, about 30 minutes to be expected, faster pace, rigorous. Um, it is important that your student is organized and motivated, and there is a summer reading requirement that is due on the first day of school, so definitely high expectations. Then there's seventh grade language arts, Highly differentiated to meet the needs of all learners. <coughs> there is an average of an hour to hour and a half homework weekly. So I could say 20 minutes per night, but that might be broken up differently depending on the teacher. There is quarterly independent reading um, <coughs> to meet the needs of your individual student. And there are three major writing pieces throughout the year. There is also a course that we call interdisciplinary. It is a co-taught classroom with a block schedule with a project-based learning approach. Um, it is where we have shared reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills between language arts and social studies. So if there's a high interest in history and low motivation for writing, there's a balance there. Um, but if your student is passionate and creative with writing, there's definitely outlets with that as well. And there's an average of 45 minutes of homework per week Every day might be broken up a little differently. Quarterly reading, three major writing pieces. And what's great about this class is there's about 60% shared grades, um, which means homework for one course is usually put in the grade book for both classes. So the homework is um, shared time, two different grades. <coughs> and I would like to introduce to you Heather Swenson, Department Head for Science. Good evening. The science program at the junior high is an integrated program much like it is at the Green School. Topics include those under the branches of earth and space science, life science, and physical science. All students develop basic laboratory skills, incorporate technology through simulations or web quests, experience hands-on activities, and work on strengthening critical thinking skills through inquiry and STEM-based projects. Both science pathways, Science 7 and Science 7 Honors, students will regularly perform experiments and be involved in hands-on activities. They collect data, they analyze information, and we are helping them to make connections between the content and the natural world. This lab-based program, in addition to abstract concepts and the emphasis on higher level thinking, makes science a difficult transition from green to the junior high. The key difference between the courses science and Science 7 Honors is what students are expected to do with the content. Coursework at the Honors level is designed for independent work with abstract concepts and the ability to provide detailed, in-depth analysis of core concepts from a variety of sources. Students are asked to draw appropriate conclusions from key concepts and recognize relationships between variables being studied. Whereas Science 7 scaffolds these concepts and guides questioning to assist students in the development of accurate conclusions, recognizing and explaining relationships. Uh, it provides greater review of key concepts and vocabulary uh, within the course. Students cover the same content as directed by the state content standards and placement at the junior high science program does not dictate future placement either in grade eight science or in the high school. Ooh, I get to introduce Mr. Shomo. Usually it's Mr. Harris for social studies. My name is Rick Shomo. I am uh, here on behalf of Victor. I wanted somebody better looking, but unfortunately you got me. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, we have uh, two, besides the ID that was mentioned for so, or language arts, we have World History Honors and Academic. Um, in World History Honors, uh, we want students to be able to process information quickly, easily move from concrete to the abstract, 
um, apply and analyze information in a variety of formats, and we definitely want them skilled in the use of primary documents. Students should be able to express themselves and support their opinions both in written and oral formats. So we're talking things like position papers, debate, and definitely in classroom discussions. Um, they should be able to critically think and problem solve and also complete complex assignments independently. That's very important if they get that. The work that these students are expected to complete will be assessed for a different level of skill mastery. Some reading assignments are above grade level when they do these honors classes. Um, it doesn't mean that they're going to have more homework. The honors pathway does not necessarily mean that, uh, but the quality of the work will be higher. There is no summer work required for honors world history either. For academics, um, that's where the majority of Sycamore students will be. We still have high expectations and focus practice. We want to help the students develop those skills for independent higher level thinking. Um, students are expected to be self-motivated, read at or above grade level, complete homework assignments consistently and in a timely fashion. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact Mr. Harris, probably best at his email, harrisb at sycamoreschools.org. Thank you. Oh, and I'm introducing the music department, Mr. Jim Blankenship. Hi, I'm Jim Blankenship. I'm the interim district music supervisor here at Sycamore Community Schools. It's my pleasure to be able to talk to you guys today about our music program, which is truly world class. To a testament to that, we've been, for the past five years in a row, listed as one of the top 100 communities in the nation for music education. And with your support, we hope to be continuing that tradition in 2018. Um, we do have the traditional year-long performance-based classes, band, choir, orchestra. The choir is directed by Deborah Stein and Jesse Callahan. The orchestra program is directed by Dr. Angela Santangelo, who directs 5 through 12. And our band is directed by Ryan Lamb. Unique to us in the band program, we have a percussion class. So if your child is a percussionist at the Green School, they'll be combined with 7th and 8th grade students um, so that they can be truly um, challenged. If you're in band in school, we all know that the percussionists sat in the back of class and didn't hold their sticks very well. So this gives us an opportunity to give them more specific instruction. Uh, what you're going to want to look at, um, we do have some semester courses. Uh, one of those semester courses that doesn't involve instrumental is our world music class. We also have some other uh, semester-long courses that are intro classes, intro to piano and intro to guitar. You don't need to have a guitar. Um, we're fortunate enough for our district provides those instruments as well as piano. However, we do want you to understand that it is an intro class. So if they do have an instrumental background, especially if your child is taking piano lessons or guitar lessons, we assume that they have never touched a guitar or a piano before. So if your child has taken piano lessons, intro to piano is probably something that's not going to challenge them as much as, as you may want to be able to in that piano class. So we don't <coughs> recommend if they, if they have piano background or maybe they play clarinet and they're interested in playing guitar, it does start at the very rudimentary basic um, music reading skills. Um, it's my pleasure at this time to introduce our athletic director, Jim DeJoy. Good evening. Um, as mentioned, uh, my name is Jim DeJoy. I'm a very proud um, athletic director here at Sycamore Junior High School. Uh, our department consists of 37 teams, and that is the most in our conference. We play in the Greater Miami Conference with the GMC. Along with that, we have 57 coaches, and most of them are their teachers in our building or teachers here in the district. Uh, more than half of our student population participates in at least one sport during the school year, and we have an athletic trainer who's in the building every day and attends all home events. Our facilities are top of the line, and we're also two-time recipients of the Harold A. Meyer Award and Respect the Game Challenge for Ethics, Integrity, and Sportsmanship. We're one of 18 schools in Ohio to win this award. That's something we're very, very proud of. At the athletic department booth tonight, uh, I will have a handout that details fall sports starting dates, contact information for our fall coaches, details about free physicals that are going to be held at TriHealth um, on July 21st, and finally, other important athletic information you'll find on the district website and our Twitter page. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Souter, and she will talk about student organizations and activities. Thank you. I am um, Mrs. Suter, so as mentioned before, I'm one of the school counselors here at the junior high and I am going to talk a little bit about some of the other organizations and activities that we have here. As Mr. DeJoy mentioned, we have a wonderful athletic program here that showcases a lot of different sports. 
but we also include in our activities over 25 organizations that are not necessarily sports related. As you can see, we offer a whole variety of those organizations. The purpose of that is that we want to try to allow our students to find something that they can find interest in. It is obviously a primary focus of being a school that the academics are extremely important, but we do want to help shape the well-rounded student because eventually we'll be sending them off into the world and we don't just want the academic part, we want the socialization and the extracurricular part to be just as important. We offer journalism clubs, fine arts clubs, sports clubs, for those of your students who aren't super interested in joining a team that you may have to try out for or has more of the games and matches, the sports clubs are a little bit more leisurely. Uh, there's a few there that are offered and our, the big thing with our clubs and activities is that they're not always going to be year-round. So in order for students to gain information about all of these activities, they're placed on our announcements, which our uh, announcements are given every day during the school day. You can find more information about these clubs on our website. We do have a pamphlet under the activities link, and those um, that pamphlet is the current this year's activities. It might change going forward, a few things may change each year, but the majority of those is through that pamphlet. It'll give you a little bit more detailed instructions and descriptions of all of those activities. And now it is my honor to introduce Mrs. Zelvi, who is one of our other assistant principals at the junior high. You guys are a really somber crowd. You need to get excited. I'm a class of 2024 parent. My kid's coming over here. We're over halfway done with school, people. This is exciting. <laughs> They're almost out the door. I can feel it. But we got to survive these two years, and it's going to be tough. So get your cameras ready. Take a photo of this slide. You want to know that these are the dates for schedule pickup because your kids are going to start asking that question the second they turn in their course selectors on Friday. When do I get my schedule? The answer is these two days during these specific times. That's it. So they won't know until August. They'll nag you until then. When they come in for schedule pickup, we do school pictures on that day. So you definitely want to tell your kid to come in before cross country practice, not after. Um, and you might want to advise a shower prior to. That's a big win. So, school pictures, you'll pick up Chromebooks if that is a need. Um, if you have a new student to the district, things like that, they may be available at that time. Um, also, um, we will have your ability to pay fees, the ability to, pick, to complete your final forms at that time. That all happens in schedule pickup. You will receive lots of communication from us about that um, in the summertime so that you know specifically what location within the building um, and all the pieces that we'll be covering during that day. PBIS is something that you should be familiar with from the Green School. It stands for Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. The Green School does a fabulous job of communicating with parents about what their emphasis or focus is within positive behavior supports and interventions in the building. Overall, it's just building a culture with common language as well as common expectations for student behavior. We're rewarding and recognizing when students are doing what is expected of them. We are teaching and putting some consequences in place when students are not able to meet those specific expectations. The number one reason I want you to see this slide is we've created these fabulous class shirts. So we want your kids to have their class of 2024 shirt. This evening, Ms. Farrow, one of our amazing Spanish teachers, will be in the academic fair. She'll be modeling this design for you. Um, it'll be our staff shirt as well as our student shirts, two different colors for two different classes. You definitely don't want your kid to be the one wearing the t-shirt he's been wearing for three days when everybody else is wearing this at the pep rally. So we've got a station set up for you tonight to go ahead and pre-order those. And then we, were gonna, um, we will take care of delivery, whether that be at schedule pickup or in the first week of school. But they're going to be sold for $10. We want kids to be a part of it. We want them to promote it. This is designed to also be a piece of spirit wear for them. But as you can see, our four, expect our four expectations that we'll be driving home are actually the same as the ones at Green School. Being respectful, being safe, being a problem solver and also being responsible. So we'll do a lot of instruction around that in the fall when they return to school and it will be revisited throughout the year. 
I'm going to talk to you a little bit about summer learning and enrichment opportunities. I am um, proud to say that Mr. Gutermuth is the administrator for that program, not me. Um, but I will share with you that in the summer programming, we will have math and reading enrichment classes as well as remediation classes available. Some of your students will be assigned to summer school um, or recommended for summer school. Some of you will simply make that choice on your own because it's right for your child. Um, we have a lot of STEAM-based enrichment programming going on this summer, during summer learning, um, and as well as programming for um, students that are English language learners. Um, and so Dr. Gutermuth, Mr. Gutermuth is indeed in charge of that. He will answer any and all of your questions. His email is on here if you need to reach him. Um, scheduling for that or the opening for enrollment will open in March. Um, and that'll happen through Parent Portal. So you can pay through Parent Portal, to pay through Parent Portal, that's a good one, um, and register through Parent Portal. Um, as well as tonight in the academic fair, there will be a paper two-sided form that'll tell you about what those classes are um, and uh, dates specifically for those. Finally, I'm very excited, I kind of want to give myself a drum roll here, to tell you that we are offering this year, for the very first time, a program that we are calling JH Launch. Those of you that eagerly sent your children to Green 101 to ease your own anxiety about the transition to the Green School will be thrilled to know you have another opportunity knocking on your door where you can send your kids to JH Launch and ease your own anxiety about their transition to this building. Um, your kids are welcome and invited to register and come. It's going to be two two-day sessions, four hours each day. We are going to go through everything here. We will walk their schedules. We will understand the building and the facilities. We will understand who the important staff members are that are here to support their needs. We will meet teachers. We will understand how to get on and off the bus here with all of the buses that are out there. We will work through all the kinks of lockers, all the kinks of finding the different classrooms within this building that don't exist logically because you can go upstairs and be on the second floor and go upstairs again and be on the second floor. You can also take an elevator to four floors, but we're really only a three floor building. So all things will be discussed at JH Launch. We are really excited to offer this to your kids. As we know, as much as I tease that it is your anxiety about coming, your kids are nervous. Your kids are really nervous. And they will be fine. I'm going to reassure you, they will be fine. We have not lost any of them yet. They will figure out how to get bell to bell, navigate the building, do all of their homework, and continue to drive you crazy as they move through adolescence. But in the meantime, this will give them two days to really find comfort and home in their new building. And we're excited to welcome them to that. So that will also be featured in the summer learning uh, parent portal. You'll be able to register there. And a, a very large number of you, about 98% of you that responded to our survey said, this is something that you're interested in and it's something that you really believe is a need. So we're excited for your feedback um, and to deliver this program for you and your kids. So in the end, that is our presentation this evening. It is my honor and my privilege to show you one of the most amazing performing arts groups in our building, as Mr. Blankenship shared with you. Um, we are in the top 100 for music, and there is a reason. Um, so our Sycamore Singing Company is going to entertain you this evening as we finish up. When they conclude, uh, we will look forward to welcoming you in the Media Center for our academic fair. You'll follow what we call the Green Mile. It's the, up here, up the uphill green carpeted hallway, um, and we will all be in the Media Center uh, eager to join you there and answer your questions. We thank you for coming tonight, and please enjoy the Sycamore Singing Company under the direction of Mr. Callahan. Well, good evening. As she said, my name is Jesse Callahan, and I am one of two choir directors that we have here at the junior high, along with my teaching partner, Mrs. Stein, who is running lights for us tonight. Um, we are very proud of the almost 400 students that we have in the choir program here at the junior high and all of the wonderful things that they accomplish. Uh, tonight, you're going to be entertained by members of our extracurricular show choir called the Sycamore Singing Company. This is a 36-member ensemble that's drawn from students all over the building. Anybody um, who's a 7th or 8th grader here at Sycamore can audition for SSE. Um, and it's a very competitive audition choir that students will try out for at the start of the school year. Um, so this year's 6th graders, who will be 7th graders next year, should listen to announcements at the start of next school year to find out how they can uh, audition for this group. And those auditions typically happen um, sometime near the beginning of September. Um, my co-director, Polly Savage, and I have had the pleasure of working with these students 
since September of this year, of last year, I'm sorry, and they truly represent the best of what Sycamore has to offer. Uh, since we're in the middle of preparations for our upcoming fine arts concert, uh, the group is not 100% concert ready yet. We're still polishing things, but I know that you're going to love what you see anyway. Um, and these 7th uh, and 8th graders uh, really do accomplish amazing things throughout the year. For our first song, it's called Fly Me to the Moon, I gave the students the task of choreographing this song themselves. And with only a little feedback from Mrs. Savage and me, uh, the SSC members that you see up here, Julie Fort, Juliana Gutierrez, Bell Scholz, uh, Ali Sproul, and Andrew Steiner all rose to the challenge, and we're very proud of what they came up with for choreography. For our second song, called Sign, Seal, Delivered, uh, it's part of a Stevie Wonder medley that SSC is going to be performing um, at contest in Washington, D.C. in May this year. Uh, while it's not choreographed yet, it will be soon, and the students really love singing it, and I know that you will love it as well. So, without any further ado, please enjoy Sycamore Singing Company. 